considering the way the Canadians have gone about their series with the Toronto Maple Leafs, what would you say has surprised you the most about their play? I would say their lack of compete and, and just really seeming off. You know, the Montreal Canadiens said they were really looking forward to having that week off between the regular season and the playoffs so that they could prepare that when Dominic Ducharme took over as head coach, that they didn't have that opportunity to, to have real practices because of their schedule. And they finally were now able to have that time to implement his system, to have more time to prepare for the playoffs and to rest. And then they come out and they look so flat. Every single one of these playoff games, for the most part, have looked like regular season games. There's not the, the passion, the emotions that go into these games uh, that you're used to seeing in the playoffs. And especially these are two rival teams. Yes, there's no fans in the stands, uh, you know, fans not going from one city to, a, to another. So that element's missing. But there's just, mm -hmm. I find that sense of urgency from the Montreal Canadiens has been the biggest surprise for me, especially because all year long they said that they were lacking those things because they didn't have time to practice and they had more than enough time to get their, their practice time in. It's, it's, a, it's a great rivalry, but I don't know where the excitement is going from the Montreal Canadiens. I mean, they're not, they're, they're not really showing that they want to win. They want to you know, make the difference. They're very, very passive in a, you know, a large part of their, their play. I don't, I don't get it. And, you know, there's no better opportunity than playoff hockey. And when you come up against a, a, a team like the Leafs, uh, understanding that you have to be at your very, very best each and every shift. And for whatever reason, they're sitting back and watching Toronto versus initiating. And that's not the way you win hockey games. And until they figure out that there's no longer a, a chance of winning if they're sitting back waiting to see how the other team is going to play instead of you initiating, you're, you're not going to go anywhere. I mean, this regular season was such a grind for the Canadians. Yeah. Everything they went through, you know, that 7-1-2 and two start, then the wheels started to fall off, then Claude Julien and Kirk Muller got fired, then Stefan Wake got fired in the middle of a game, <laughs> then they had the COVID test for Armia, then they had to play their last uh, 25 games in 44 days. And they survived it all, and they got into the playoffs, and then they had a week off. So you figure, okay, guys, we, we, we made it. We got through this. Let's go now. Let's, you know, we didn't go through all this for nothing. Let's get ramped up here. We got a week off to practice, get ready. And you'd expect them to come out just flying in the playoffs. Like, just, you know, we survived this. Like, bond together. Let's, you know, let's prove that all this, everything we went through this year wasn't for nothing. And then they come out, and no emotion, no fire, no – playing boring hockey, can't score, relying on Carey Price, same old story with the Canadians. And, uh, to me, you know, it's a few years ago when Mark Bergevin said the biggest problem in the team was an attitude, a bad attitude, and they had to change the attitude in the room. That, has it changed? Like, you know, when, that, like, when a team comes out flat like that in the playoffs, I think there's an attitude problem. And, there, and you know, it, it was it – was, P.K. Subban's fault, then it was Max Pacioretty's fault, then it was Alex Galchenyuk's fault, then it was everybody's fault that the bad attitude and they got rid of all those guys and it didn't work. Still, you got to question this team's attitude when they just don't show up in the playoffs. It's hard to understand how a team that went through everything the Canadians went through this year doesn't show up in the playoffs. I think the thing that surprised me the most uh, it's something that Jess mentioned in our actual episode, uh, which you should check out, by the way. Uh, after game three, when Carey Price was asked about his teammate scoring woes, and he straight up said, you know what, I'm not frustrated because I've seen my guys in practice and the shots that they're able to do, and they're going to find a way to make something work. And he gave his team this vote of confidence that, you know, I think for a guy like Carey Price, who has had little to no run support, uh, dating back to like the 2014, 2015 playoffs. We've seen the statistics going around. He's had run support of like below two goals uh, from the Montreal Canadiens in the postseason. Worse than guys like Peter Morazic and, and Craig Anderson. This is a guy who has done so much for this organization. And if there's a guy who could go to the media and just be like, hey, well, you know what? Like this team needs to step up. Carey Price has all license to do that. Say what you want about how he was in the regular season this past year, but when you look at his overall body of work, that's a guy who deserves a lot better from his team. And for him to just, you know, praise his team 
and say, hey, you know what? I believe in my guys. And the very next game, no goal scored. That is that's the thing that surprised me the most in this Canadians Leaf series. The fact that, you know, the team's best player shows support in you. And I get he's speaking to the media. He's, the players aren't necessarily hearing that message. But, you know, sometimes they're able to hear things. And if he's saying that to us, I can't imagine what he's been saying to his players in the locker room. So to have the players kind of go out and not be able to score against the Toronto Maple Leafs, have another bad second period, and then have Alex Galchenyuk uh, have the game of his life in the playoffs. I don't think he's ever had a three-point game in the playoffs, as far as I'm concerned. That surprised me the most about this Montreal Canadiens team. And I think in terms of my outlook on how this team could have looked in this series, that took out a lot of optimism I had for, for the organization in this series against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Well, Julie, just to follow up with you, Terry Price hates talking to the media. Oh, yes. He yes, doesn't he does. Try to hide it. He doesn't try to hide it. You usually no. get a one-word or a two-word answer, and you just can't wait for it to end. He wasn't talking to the media when he said that. He was talking to his teammates and they do that. That's, that was he, that he, whether he said that to them in the locker room also, that's the most words Carey Price has ever said in one soundbite that I can remember. And <laughs> that was a message to his teammates that like, come on guys, I still have confidence in you. I see you guys shoot every day in practice. I know you can do it. That was his way. I think of speaking to his teammates and say, come on guys, let's do this. And one in one ear and out the other, I guess. Yeah, a lot of times players tell what people want to hear and uh you know it's sometimes it's accurate sometimes it's a way to motivate but really it's all about the players getting it done and uh you know next game is going to be a test of character on who really wants to continue to play and sacrifice what's ever needed to get to the next uh, next game and uh it's going to be a real tough challenge, but you're going to get a real good reading on the uh, the overall character addressing. But if you even oh. look at the way that they started game four, like it could have been easily three nothing early on in that game if Carey yeah. Price did not make some of those key saves. So that I think is probably the most disappointing part is that Price is saying, I have your back, guys, and they come out and they come out flat the next game. Let us know in the comments section about all the things that surprised you in the uh, first round series between the Canadians and the Maple Leafs. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, just write us something nice in the comment section. It's always <laughs> nice whenever we get that stuff too. And visit HockeyInsideOut.com to check out our full episode.